We're going to be deploying Cloud Foundry on Kubernetes. You can head over to tanzu.vmware.com slash developer website slash Kubernetes and then head over to the CF for Kate's getting started. Before you begin, make sure you have a computer with at least four CPU available and eight gigabytes of memory, which is the minimum required for one node. You'll also need a couple of tools, kubectl, kind, Kubernetes and Docker, cloud, the Cloud Foundry command line interface, the Bosch command line interface, and CAP and YTT. After installing all these tools, make sure you also have a Docker Hub account. The first step after getting your machine set up is downloading the cf for kates GitHub repository. You git clone the URL from the repo and then you cd into the cf for kates repository. Open up our IDE and take a look at what's inside. So we're going to just take a quick look at, at the um, directory deploy kind. And here's our config for our kind cluster. And it says how many nodes we need and opens up a couple of ports. So you know, enter into the command line kind, create cluster, dash dash, config equal to, and that directory, directory was deploy. Kind cluster. Our kind cluster created. Next, we need access to that cluster. So, the command you need is conveniently printed out by kind to point your config towards your cluster. Next, we're going to be using a script to generate all the values with, that we need. It's called generate values conveniently and it's under hack. Just wanted to show you where that was. The script will create all the certs, password, keys, and the config we need for CF Kates. That way you don't have to create everything by hand. We're going to use vcap.me as the domain. That's what the dash D flag signifies. And that tells CF for Kates that this is a local deployment and we don't have to set up DNS for our domain. And we're gonna be sending that to a file called cf-installvalues.yaml. You can call it whatever you like. Going to CF install values, the file we just created. And as you can see, our system domain is right here. This is our admin password for our Cloud Foundry instance on Kubernetes. At the very bottom of the install values YAML file, we need to append the configuration for an application registry. This is because Cloud Foundry will take source code and dependencies and turn them into an image that can be used. We need an image re registry so we can save our image and also for version control. We're going to be using Docker Hub as our image repository since it's so common and easy to set up. We're going to append our app registry to the end of this file. For our app registry, we have to enter our username twice, not the repository, so it's username, username, and then your password. If you do want to look into using a different kind of application registry, then you can go to the Cloud Foundry GitHub, deploying CF for Kates, click on that, and then scroll down, uh, steps to deploy, scroll down a little bit more, and then you'll see the different app registries. Once the app registry is set up, the next step is to install a metric server. Metric server is a scalable source of container resource metrics for Kubernetes, built in auto scaling pipelines, making it easier to debug auto scaling pipelines. And we're installing it, as a re it's a requirement. For CF for Kates. We are now ready to deploy. So enter cap deploy dash a CF for Cloud Foundry. And then we're going to be using the YTT, the YAML templating tool, and entering a couple of YAML files that are going to help us deploy Cloud, Cloud Foundry on Kubernetes. One of those YAML files is the CF install values that you created through the generate value script. And we're also going to apply two more YAML files. 
to remove uh, requirements that we don't really need for a local deployment. So we're going to be removing resource requirements. And also, we're going to remo be removing the need for an ingress gateway service as well. OK, remove ingress gateway dash service dot yaml. Once we're ready to enter this command, it's going to ask us whether we want to continue. Just hit yes. And it'll begin installing everything onto our cluster. This will take approximately 10 minutes. Sometimes it takes way less. Sometimes it takes just a little bit longer, but that's approximately how long it takes. And we're just speeding it up so we don't waste your time. Let's check that our Cloud Foundry deployment was deployed. So the first thing we're going to do is set our API endpoint. Our endpoint was set up successfully. Up next is authorizing as an administrative user with Cloud Foundry. Going into our IDE, you can see our CF install values. And at the very top, you can see the CF admin password. This is the administrative password to authenticate as an admin user with Cloud Foundry. Now that our API endpoint is set and that we authenticated with the Cloud Foundry instance, let's enable Docker containers. So enter CF enable feature flag Diego Docker. This is so we can use Docker containers in our Cloud Foundry instance. To keep configuring our Cloud Foundry instance, we have to create an org and a space. To create an org, do CF create org and then the name. Cloud Foundry provides multi tenancy through orgs and spaces. That way you can split up and segment your Cloud Foundry instance to your teams in any way that you wish. To create a space within our org, do CF create space dash O for the organization and then the name of the space that you want to create. A Cloud Foundry instance could have multiple orgs and spaces. So we have to then target the specific org and space that we're looking to modify. We are now ready to deploy an application into Cloud Foundry. Luckily, one comes with the Cloud Foundry for Kubernetes repository. It's under test, smoke, assets, and test node app. It's a very, very simple application or complicated, however you want to see it. It just says hello world when you hit the URL. To push our simple node application, write CF push, then the application name, and then dash P with the path to the source code. You could also CD into the directory that has the source code and just write CF push in your application's name. You could also alternatively use a manifest YAML to deploy and configure your application. Now to deploy your app, just hit enter. And as you can see immediately, we already have our route, test node app at dot vcap dot me. You can see in the text that's being printed out that an npm build pack was used to create this image. Build packs are an open source technology and part of the CNCF. You can use them so you don't have to manually create images that you're using in your Kubernetes or other projects. You can see that our image is already in the Docker Hub repo. And if we refresh, we can see that our image is here. That would be 82AA3A45. And as you can see, there it is. Using build packs to automate the creation of your images is more secure. It'll take care of all of your dependencies and make sure they follow the best practices in, in building an image every single time. Our simple application has been deployed by Cloud Foundry. Now we can go to this route and see what it looks like. Now we go to our route and hello world. So our application is working fine. To see how our Kubernetes cluster changed, you can look at the CF workloads namespace and get the pods there. All the applications that are deployed to Cloud Foundry 
get deployed on pods on the CF workloads namespace. There we find our test node app. To show you what else you can do, let's clone the Spring Pet Clinic application and deploy that to Cloud Foundry. That way we have more than one application since Cloud Foundry is a platform for many applications and microservices. Spring is a Java application written in Spring Boot. Just as before, build packs created our image, sent it to our image reg registry, and then deployed that into our Cloud Foundry instance. Here we have our Pet Clinic app fully functioning. Okay, let's see what else we can do. Let's go back to our terminal, clean it up a little bit, and then we'll enter CF apps. You can see the applications on your system. If you do kubectl get pods for the CF workloads namespace, as you might expect, you'll see both the Spring Pet Clinic app and the test node app. Both the Java application and the node application are on Cloud Foundry. Let's try scaling one of the applications. The command to scale is just CF scale, the application name, then dash i and the number of instances that you would like. We're going to be scaling the test node app to five instances. Let's also go ahead and scale the Spring Pet Clinic application. Let's scale this to, um, let's see, how many instances? Um, three instances. OK, there we go. Now if we do CF apps, Spring Pet Clinic has three instances, and the test node app has five. Now let's check if these applications are actually still running even though we scaled. See, so refreshing Spring Pet Clinic looks like it works. Everything is fine, everything is normal. And our node application is also running just as it should, saying hello world. Okay, now we can delete our applications just by doing CF delete and then the name of your application. Let's first delete the um, Spring Pet Clinic application. It's going to prompt you whether you want to delete. Just hit yes. And then we can delete the test node application. CF delete and then just the name of the application. And hit yes. Both applications are deleted. To verify, you can do CF apps and no applications were found. And you can look at the pods and you'll see that they're all terminating or deleted. Your computer is back to normal now. Seeing all the pods that are left on the cluster, the only remainder is the metric server. And to delete the entire cluster, just write in kind delete cluster. To learn more about the Cloud Foundry Foundation, you could head over to the cloudfoundry.org. Katakoda also has an online interactive Cloud Foundry. To remain up to date with the latest developer technologies, make sure to keep checking tanzu.vmware.com slash developer. If you head over to the community tab, you can enter your email address and sign up to receive our newsletter.